As I'm sure you're well aware, there was a $2 trillion stimulus package called the CARES Act that went towards relief for basically anyone who was impacted by the COVID-19 disaster, which is pretty much everyone, pretty much every individual and in business was impacted some way negatively. And as of the other day, the $350 billion portion that was slotted for small business relief funding has been completely dried up or at least accounted for. And this got me to thinking, okay, where did the other billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars go in this funding program? So I did some digging and what I found was really interesting and sometimes outright entertaining where exactly these funds were allocated. So I'm gonna report that to you in this video. I'm gonna break down where each section of this funding went to, what I found interesting. Before I get into it, please consider liking this video. Every single like helps out the YouTube algorithm, helps push this video out and my other videos out, and I would appreciate it so much. So let's get right into it. The major areas of funding went to individuals, large businesses, small businesses, state and local governments, and public services. So I'm gonna break down each and every one of those. And like I said, I did some, did some digging, but I really didn't have to go too far. Pretty much everything I needed was either on the CARES Act itself, which isn't the easiest to read, or on a website called visualcapitalist.com. This is not a sponsor. They just did a really good job of presenting the information. They have some nice graphs and stuff like that. So let's start with individuals, which is the biggest section. 30% of the total CARES Act went towards individuals, which is $603 billion. Now $300 billion of that $600 billion went towards the cash payments that we all know and love, or maybe you don't love them so much if you haven't received the, the cash payments yet, but it's that $1,200 stimulus check that goes to most eligible Americans and $500 per dependent. Beyond that, $260 billion went towards extra unemployment benefits and $43 billion towards student loans. To break that down a little bit, there's a temporary suspension on any student loans held by the federal government, meaning no payments are required, no interest is accrued until the end of September 2020. And borrowers with federally backed loans can request relief on mortgage payments for up to six months. There's also an expansion of unemployment benefits, including a four month enhancement of those benefits and includes freelancers and workers in the gig economy. Now this isn't really the interesting part. I just wanna cover my bases here. The next part is big businesses. This is the next largest section of the CARES Act, 25% of the total CARES Act or $500 billion. The goal of this portion is to help out the industries most impacted by COVID-19. About $58 billion of the $500 billion goes to airlines and airline contractors, which makes sense because those are just absolutely tanking right now. About 425 billion of the 500 billion is set aside for mid and large business loans. Anything over 500 employees can qualify for these. And I did some digging on these loan programs and I was actually pleasantly surprised for most part. Eligible mid and large sized corporations can receive loans through these programs. However, unlike the small business loan programs, they have to be charged an interest rate of no more than 2% and there was no verbiage on forgiveness. So they have to repay this money. So I found that really interesting because I didn't expect that. I expected them to have forgiveness on the larger business size. The remaining $17 billion is reserved for national security. Now there was no indication on what exactly that means or where it's going to, but there's some suspicion out there that that is going towards Boeing. And if you know anything about Boeing right now, they are not doing so hot. Another interesting note is companies receiving stimulus money will be barred from engaging in stock buybacks for the term of the loan plus one year. The reason for this is if a company buys back its stocks, it lowers the total amount of stocks available for that company, making it look like the earnings per share go up. So that's why they bar that. The bill also indicates that an inspector general, this I found very interesting, an inspector general will oversee the recovery process along with a special committee given $80 million, 80 million to oversee the loans and the loan programs for big businesses. Say what you will about that, <laughs> sounds like a lot of money. Moving on to small businesses where the total funding comes out to $377 billion. Interesting point to make here is small businesses are receiving 37% less funding than large businesses, despite accounting for half of the United States workforce. I found that very interesting. 
Of that $377 billion, $350 billion went to those new loan programs, $10 billion in grants like the EIDL grant, both of which are already used up, and $17 billion in relief on existing loans. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here because I already have tons of videos on this topic. The next two segments are state and local governments and public services. I'm gonna lump these together just for the sake of time, but this money included $274 billion for COVID-19 response, $14 billion for higher education, $5 billion for family programs, $100 billion for hospitals, $4 billion to CDC programs, $20 billion for veterans healthcare, and many, many more things. But I'm gonna dig into something else in the CARES Act that I found personally a little bit more interesting. In the CARES Act itself, if you go to about three-fourths away through, there's some specific funding for a whole bunch of different government agencies and entities and how much additional they're allotted during this catastrophe time. And here's some of the entertaining ones that I saw. Food and Drug Administration, salaries and expenses, and an additional $80 million in funding. United States Attorneys, salaries and expenses, an additional $3 million in funding. FBI, salaries and expenses, an additional $20 million in funding. Federal Prison System, salaries and expenses, an additional $100 million in funding. Legal Services Corporation, $50 million in funding. Emergency Planning and Security Cost in the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C., $5 million. Now, <laughs> this one's my favorite. Department of Energy, Energy Programs. This is word for word in the CARES Act. It says, Department of Energy, Energy Programs, an additional amount for science. It's literally in quotes, $99.5 million for science, in quotes. <laughs> I'm sure it's deserving, but just how it's written cracks me up. So this is just a basic guideline of what exactly I found entertaining as far as what's being spent in the CARES Act. Only time will tell if additional funds are added. I think they probably likely will as far as the small business category because that amount of funds dried up so fast. And I think that's the area right now that's in the most need. So if you appreciate this content, please consider subscribing. It would mean the world to me. And until next time, hope you have a profitable day.